something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I think it's time we stop children What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Being drawn Nobody's right If everybody's wrong Young people speak in their minds Are getting so much resistance From behind the Time we stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Stations. Battle stations. Battle stations. <laughs> yes. War. <laughs> we are at war. In yes. This, in this edition of day release, um, because you know, tastefully, it's um, <laughs> it's in the yeah. news, right? Yes. There's a so, fair bit of war in the air. Yeah, what better way to show solidarity by by wearing a helmet? Yes, <laughs> watching some war films. What kind of helmet is that? I think it's a replica SS kind of stormtrooper. <laughs> Good helmet, Excellent. Uh, which my wife bought for me. Um, yeah, yeah, not uh, quite sure why. Yeah. But it doesn't have a swastika on it. No, 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 no. no. I <laughs> might draw that on. <laughs> okay. But I'll do the I'll do the correct one. I'll do the, I'll be a Buddhist Nazi. Like I'll draw it that way yeah. around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peace. Because you see those, you see those um, here in Japan uh, adorning things like um, manhole covers. Okay. So it it yeah, when I first arrived, I was wondering why. Well, I knew I knew it was the inverted, but if I hadn't have known, I would have, I would have wondered why there were Nazi manhole covers <laughs> all over the place. But uh, yeah. anyway, so the, yeah, this is day release. I'm Clive Davis, and who are you? Robin, French right. French roll, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we talk about this is our excuse to kind of keep somewhat up to date with new releases, right? So, yeah, but me, this... and, me and Robin talk uh, as films that are you know fresh, fresh out the oven, freshly baked films, or as freshly mm. baked as we can get. And uh, yeah, our theme this time is war. Three yeah. war films. Well, I I, know. I I didn't actually know that was the, the theme properly. I I don't think because I hadn't been paying enough attention. But you chose these films, um, right? Uh, to put me through. <laughs> they were uh, yeah. So we did. Oh, go on. You tell the uh, the uh, the films. On All right. Well, we're gonna or, yeah. On order. on order. On order. Yeah. Uh, the Battle at Lake Changjin. Yeah. And the war oh, below. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Two wanna... very long films and one was Quite short. to be short. Yeah. 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 But, um... So shall we start with On Order? Yeah. Let's let's do that. Yeah. Do uh, it, well, nice. that, that follows it's the nice story to... of. Do you know who? What's what? What's his his name? The, the it's On Order. Uh, I forgot he wrote, he wrote Hero in On Order, isn't it? Yes, Hero and Order. Yeah, um, and that was that was in yeah that that was the only film I knew about because I I'd, I'd, I'd heard some publicity about it because yeah talking about this 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 guy who had uh, spent whatever it was fifty years in the jungle. No, uh, twenty nine. Oh wow! Yeah. See how much I've paid. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so uh, known in uh, sometimes also uh, the full title being Onoda, 10,000 Nights in the Jungle, right? 
Mm. And uh, as you said, this is a long film, uh, two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, came out, well, it's a 2021 film. It's a Fran French, Japanese, German, Belgian, Italian, Cambodian uh, co production. Yeah, it, it is oh. currently in the cinema in London. In uh, Okay, all right. Uh, Did you see it? In the theater? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. But. Um, it's in the, uh, I, I would have, but uh, only because I started my new job, so I didn't have time. But um, yeah, it's in the Genesis in Myland, if anyone wants to go and see it from London. Oh, is, Je right, this is a slight tangent, but is Genesis, is that a chain? No, no, it's an independent-ish cinema. Because isn't there Genesis in Hackney? I think you're talking about the Myland, oh, unless they, they, I, I think there's a picture house in Hackney, but we are going off on a tangent now. So No, no, the reason I brought it up was because I was supposed to alert you to the fact because uh, Darren mm -hmm. told me there's, that there's a theatre, and I thought it was in Hackney, called The Genesis. Mm -hmm. And recently they've started, I think, is it monthly or every couple of weeks or something, they've started programming uh, old school Kung Fu films. Uh, it probably is The Genesis, Marlen Genesis. Right, Which so you there you go. You're in a, you're in the, you're on the rare position. Um, grab mm. it while you can, if you can, to go and see old school kung fu films on a big screen. Oh, I'd love okay. to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, they they did have a Shaw Brothers uh, season at the um, BFI, not that long ago. I saw. Uh, All right. What, how many chambers of the Shaolin are there? Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Checking. Um, I saw that. It's a great film, uh, isn't it? Yeah, but it was in um, it was in uh, really perfect quality print, you know. Um, nice. I think seventy eight millimeter or something. It was really good. It was like mm. really, really looked great. proper Shaw scope. Yeah. Anyways, back to uh, Onoda. Yes. What does he do? He he he. he... Oh, he does this. He does that. <laughs> what is about yeah. in the garden? Well, um, yeah. So so Hiro Onoda. Um, so I knew a little bit, I'd, I'd heard of, so there's a few of them, right? There's a few of these um, uh, Japanese soldiers who were discovered like decades after the end of the war, still hiding out in the jungle. So there was this yeah. guy, Hironoda. Um, there was another guy, uh, Shoichi Yokoi, who was discovered, I think, a couple of years before Onoda yeah. in Guam, and then there was an, the last one was a guy called uh, Teruo Nakamura, who mm -hmm. I think was discovered on an island in the Japanese uh, in Indonesia. So yeah, um, he he wasn't a um, a proper Japanese soldier, so he didn't get the same kind of heroic treatment that uh, Onoda right. got though, because right. he wasn't ethnically Japanese. He was a conscript or whatever. Um, oh, is that right? Or something like that. Well, he he was yeah, um, yeah. I think so. I can't remember where he's from, but he he's yeah. So so where Onoda has got this kind of fame and um, I don't know if he's got he had for, fortune from it, but he he definitely had uh, a, a certain amount of romance and almost propaganda like. Yes nationalistic uh kind of what's charisma about him uh this other guy didn't get the same kind of treatment hmm. that Anoda got because uh, even though he was the last um because he just didn't fit the kind of the, the same the, the right um kind of nationalistic stereotype so it's quite it's quite interesting that 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 contrast i think because um uh because I, I was really taken by this film, but um, hmm. but then yes. uh, to the extent that I kind of did, I cried a little bit at the end. Like, you know, hmm. I really yeah, thought yeah. he was. You know, it's it's it was, a film that definitely gets better as it progresses, as well. I thought, like, yeah, it didn't both feel me and my long wife either. No, both me and my wife, we watched it together, and for the first thirty minutes or an hour, we weren't convinced. We were like, eh, is this gonna be? good or not like there were a few bits here and there that niggled 
but then mm. both of us agreed that cumulatively it was actually uh, very very good yeah um, I, I i thought it was yeah i, I guess so. no i thought it was pretty good all the way through actually okay. anyway do we need to say anything more about it or, well or... i'll give i'll give a i'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give a very brief rundown so yeah oh. Ona, onoda hero as played by endo yuya when he's a young man um he's kind of um trained in um to run I the suppose. secret war yeah 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 he's he's um he goes to uh, the notorious uh, nakano spy school um and is yeah is taught um i suppose military intelligence and and you know uh, that kind of stuff although i mean you don't really see him getting to use any of it right not um, really no you get the but you do get the feeling at least that he's he's more capable but then when he arrives in um in uh what's the island again uh luban Lu right Lugang. yeah uh, you know everyone's so uh untrained and uh disheveled and unready right. for anything that uh, right right yeah there's a great um uh film from the late 50s called Fire, fires on fires on the plane um as in plane not plane yeah. <laughs> okay that good. was a close one yeah. <laughs> and he's um so uh yes which is a great film about um yeah um if i remember correctly, that's about um the japanese you know at the very tail end in the Philippines, kind of having to resort to cannibalism to survive and, and stuff like that. Mm. Great, great film based on a really good book, I would highly recommend. But um, yeah, just for context of just how, yeah, the kind of, uh, the kind of con conditions, I suppose he would have, uh, he would have ended up encountering, right? Like mm. just pff, like you, you'd, I don't think you'd have any, um, motivation to although clearly he did because he was still defending the place 29 years later right? but um yeah so he's kind of recruited by uh this guy played by uh, ogata isse who seems to be enjoying himself a great deal and he, he it, it, at the very beginning he's 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 actually he's um he's washed up as a he wanted to be a kamikaze pilot yeah right but um he's discovered you know yeah surprise surprise it's kind of scary and daunting to actually consider doing such a thing right and um so he considers himself a bit of a washout so then i, I thought it was quite easy uh, interesting how um ogata says character is talking to him along the lines of and i'm wondering how how this resonates with other people who are maybe not so familiar with 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 japanese culture or japanese culture at this time is he, it's almost like he has to talk him into, you know, it's fine not to kill yourself. Like to survive isn't that bad. Yes. And I'm wondering if this sentiment strikes some of the nations, people from around the world are slightly strange or bizarre, or, or even maybe modern Japanese viewers as well, can't quite get their head around this notion. Right? Well, it's definitely a, um, it's a, it's an unusual introduction Mm. to his personality and that he's he's it i mean it that was the one thing the the film i progressively beyond that starts to get more kind of realistic but that was the one thing where i didn't in the beginning where i didn't know how how, how much this was obviously i looked it up afterwards but how much mm. this was based on reality or not um especially right. the the kind of the elite um yeah special yeah. forces intelligence unit i thought is that real or is that did they did they embellish that but um it was real but yeah um but, i think uh, the problem is that they don't really dwell on it so like the nakano spy school you know it, you don't yeah. really see them learning much spying right they're no. just they're there hanging out and there's that bit where they get rep, kind of reprimanded for yeah. getting drunk 
and he mm -hmm. comes in and says, oh, "Are you going to, you know, basically, are you going to take this seriously or not?" Or, and but then you don't really see them do any sort of training much, really, do you? So it's a bit, it's a bit of a, I think it's a, a slight gap in the film that you. Yeah. I suppose it's not interested in telling that story, so that's but, why it doesn't. Yeah, uh, or or maybe they just had to. It was three hours long, so maybe they would just leave some stuff on the cutting room floor. But um, it, you know, because the, the, the intro to him, you know, he's in this. It just doesn't make any sense. Why, why is he in this weird room, having kind of messed up the room and gone all sweaty and right, right? Turn the desks over. Is he in a school? What is he in? And yeah, they come in. He, these this gang of people, uh, you know, like some sort of like bureau of investigations or whatever. Um, yeah, it, it, that encounter didn't make any no. sense. And it's interesting. You're picking up instinctively on a lot of the stuff that me and my wife had a problem with at first, and I also in the mostly in the front half of the film before they get to the bank. And I think the problem might also have to do slightly with the production values, like. There's not much, it, it looks a little bit kind of cheap here and there at the beginning of the film because they, they, have, they obviously haven't got the resources to do all the period detail and everything like that. So it's just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of places are just set in like a, a no, non-specific well, environment. It's confusing because that, that the place that they encountered him, I feel like they used, they just darkened the set that they, that was. Exactly. The, yeah, or whatever the, the, and, the, and, and plus as well, and this is not necessarily a, a, this isn't a negative in the end, but because it's a Japanese story and it all plays out in Japanese language, you're, you're kind of primed for it to be a Japanese film. But you can tell, um, if you're familiar with, with, with Japan and Japanese cinema, you can tell from the get-go that the person behind the camera directing this isn't... Japanese because it's 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 just a, the tone is slightly different it's very much a Japanese story as told by someone non-Japanese which is not a problem but it's just at first it, there's a slight ad, ad, adjustment period where you have to yeah. get used to that yeah 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 I mean yeah yeah because I I thought it was going to be Japanese and then I saw the French names popping up uh is it French yeah. or is it Belgian or something. It's, I think it's uh, French, French, I think. Um, uh, Arthur Harari is the director, mm. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but, um, you know, they did a good job. In a way, it's like, um, because, I mean, he, he is a Japanese hero, isn't he? Um, you know, or, um, no, or not. Or, or is he viewed with a slight sense of, I, I, I can't work out whether he's viewed with a, a sense of sort of ironic ironic detachment yeah i don't know i don't know about when he was first discovered and we'll get to that a little bit when we get to the end of the film but nowadays i think I, i'm not sure if hero would be the right word i i guess more of a just a curiosity mm -hmm. piece and and also yeah um definitely a embodiment of a certain um a certain very Japanese way of looking at the world, but not necessarily in a, I'm not sure if people necessarily celebrate that. I think, oh, that's really great. It's just more of a, like a, a something I, I think Brits and Japanese have in common a little bit that for instance, Americans don't have so much in their cinemas. Our kind of slight embrace of the, of the, kind of loser or you know um like we like our you know eddie well, the, the eagle. Loser. yeah we like our eddie the eagle type yeah, you know people yeah. who don't win in the end or and and japan as well we're very fond of our yeah kind of people who maybe try their best even if they're they're not putting their energy in the right direction um and you know we're quite happy yeah to have a story that ends in where whereas you know i think americans like the underdog to succeed at the end and you know the, the i mean this film is like um i used to play a game uh with uh george who i mm. spoke about when we did tony on the other one on, on the other film one yeah crack. film crack crack check um, it out uh, 
we uh, uh, where we um, and some other friends where we, we it was basically Rambo. We called it Rambo, um, where one of us would have to hide. We, we'd have mm. you know guns, sticks, or whatever, and one would be Rambo. That you'd be the one who hides, and the uh, and then you have to wait out, and uh, and then whenever. So it was the the main thing was like covering yourself in mud and hiding in a bush and getting really right. like. And kind of getting all your weapons ready yeah. and, that, and then everyone else would like come through the park looking for you and then yeah. but then the the bit where they found you was really boring you'd come out and, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> um, and uh, that was all right but it was like then the kind of the fun was over once they found you but then yeah um there was definitely one time and it always happens to everyone isn't there but one time where your hiding place is really much yes. too good. You get bored. <laughs> You're yeah. there waiting for ages. And that, you know, that that came across very strongly <laughs> in this film. Um, right. You, yeah. Oh, do, do you want to explain anything else about it? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, yeah, so basically for those who don't know, yeah, he ends up, um, yeah, in, uh, on this island in the Philippines um, and he's still there 29 years later and he wasn't alone for the whole time. He did have other um, soldiers with him and they couldn't quite believe that the war had ended. And even when some people turned up and gave them like um, dropped off, like like a courtesy package of like newspapers and recordings and things to show that the world had moved on. They, they, they were like, no, this is propaganda. This has all been made. This is manufactured. Mm -hmm. This is true. And they even have like a radio and stuff to listen to, uh, you know, uh, like oh, overseas God. broadcasts from Japan, and yeah. and it's, it's it is very very interesting as well. The me and my and another thing, me the me and my wife ended up talking about this film afterwards quite a lot because we found mm. it quite interesting. You do have to wonder for these soldiers. It must have been. It's it's even though in retrospect it seems hard to believe that this is this happened that this is a true story. But mm. if you think about it. If you would have gone into the army and there's a good, you know, there's a, you were willing to die for your country, there was a chance that you might have even thought that the emperor was, you know, God's emissary on earth. And mm. there's no way that you're going to lose. And the great, uh, you know, uh, uh, Asian core prosperity sphere is going to expand. And, mm. you know, and then all of a sudden you know you're getting these broadcasts from from tokyo and you know like uh oh the americans are not the devil yeah. enemy any more and, anymore. and what these japanese women are wearing american fashions mm -hmm. and listening to jazz and like they they must have because they, they were a diff totally different type of person the uh, Japanese of uh, and, and the further along from 1945 to 1974 normal Japanese people must have seemed so totally alien to this guy right like well also I mean so well uh, one thing you missed out though was that not that it's that relevant but that you know they, they do have he does have an encounter with with the Americans he does fight them a bit loads of people get killed and then the mm. Americans just disappear. And then he spends right. about two years thinking they're going to come back and, and nothing happens. Uh, and, and, and then you start getting like further and further and further down the line. But um, the thing that uh, I, I thought was interesting was um, uh, just that it, it's the perfect, uh, in the reality of... Because that's why I thought that the um, the secret, uh, you know, intelligence officer thing of trusting no one, I, I thought that was made up and it, it was not made up, it's, but it's the perfect yes, story. And the director really nailed it, like zoomed in on that. Right. Um, very well to, but, but, you know, that it just seems too perfect because he's, he was set up and and other people like him were set up to be exactly the kind of person who's yes. going to stay in a place for yeah. 20 
uh, two years or whatever it was. Twenty nine. Um, yeah. Fifty years. <laughs> oh, come on, <laughs> you know, we're, um, and and to never trust any propaganda because he's been part of that propaganda to begin right. with. You know. Yeah. Never um, surrender. Right? Never surrender. And and also. Um, what, the other thing I found kind of interesting about it, because I kind of knew the story, but the things that were interesting to me and my wife as well this time watching it were the, the fact that, uh, so while they're there on the, you know, on the island, and they think that they have to, you know, keep it like, uh, sorry, just leaving the cat out. Um, oh, okay, I thought you were grabbing something for the purpose uh, of... No, 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 no. And... Uh, and the fact that they 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 run these little raids, right? And they go and they like burn the rice crops. Yeah, they and and occasionally take hot shots at people. And you mm. you the other side of this story I'd never considered before was, oh, these guys are fucking pests, man. Yeah. Like, and and it's interesting because even before they discovered them, it's fascinating how they became like an urban myth. I think like people would. They'd hear stories like mm. um, until they were actually discovered. I think some people didn't necessarily believe it was true, right? There were yeah, obviously yeah. these stories got out. Have you heard about this weird Japanese guy? And he's up in the woods and he fucking keep, comes out and he burns the fields and yeah, ah, he's yeah. such a pest. And then obviously they they got out into the world and and disseminate in the years before the internet and stuff. And people would hear about it and weren't mm. ah, that's bollocks. That's that's not true. But, uh, and then it I, turned I, out it was true. <laughs> like, like I think they the, were there. Uh, as, as far as I could tell from reading about it, obviously I, didn't, I haven't read a you know a major book or anything, mm. but um, you know the because I felt like uh, after watching it and I I cried and I felt such incredible sympathy for him. I felt yeah. like oh am I am I kind of being sold a uh, story? So I need to you know right. because it kind of. You know, it, a lot of the emotional pull is is to the extent of how real it it, it was, and you know, if you mm -hmm. find out that oh right, okay, actually the reality was, you know, um, but the the only thing that was kind of that wasn't completely left out, to be fair, you know, if it was a Hollywood thing, maybe they might have, but yeah, or or or, or, or you know, or, or you know, so they it, it did have that kind of or terrorist treatment ish or true to life treatment i guess where mm. they they kept in but he they killed i think it was something like 30 to 50 of the villagers um right yeah over the years yeah so yeah they were a proper menace but you did see a lot of those 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 deaths yes. you know um, yeah, they but didn't, you didn't, they didn't really, whitewash it they didn't, they didn't, didn't completely uh, no i mean no. it was a little bit but not not to the you know not 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 to a kind of yeah hollywoody kind of extent where it would be like mm. um they'd just be cannon fodder that you know um they they narrow that it narrowed in in a more altruistic way of, in, into some of the uh kind of uh, uh you know, well definitely the the woman anyway um right but uh yeah uh, anyway carry on if <laughs> you <laughs> sorry <laughs> no no so 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 yeah he is um discovered and and he was saying about the authenticity of this film as well and mm. and it is it is surprisingly authentic down to i i was even quite impressed by like some of the casting decisions like they really chose people who looked like yeah um, the the real people and then as he uh, as he gets older uh ono does played by the actor kanji suda and uh, I think this is another reason I kind of got to grips with the film more in the second half as well, is because Kanji Suda is really fucking good as mm. Oda. I thought his performance was, was he did a much better job of it than the younger guy, I think. Really? I, I thought they were, they were all really good and they were quite seamless. Uh, because in a, in a funny kind of way, like, because this, it, you know, the pacing of the film was, brilliant i thought like mm. it, the the two and a half whatever half hours went by really quick and right but the pacing was so good that you really felt like you'd got you'd gone like a, a the amount of the journey and when 
even when they cut between the two actors. Um, yeah. Or, 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 you know, um, to show, you know, uh, there was one bit where it was just a match cut yeah. almost. Um, yeah. You know, it was seamless because he he aged so uh, so much, you know, in that time. It, it was it was kind of like, you know, your face does change physically as you get older. Uh, you know, in in talk, in, talk speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, get, your face gets bulkier or whatever, you know, or, or um, whatever. Anyway, so he he did. You know, I, I thought it was just I, was, I thought it was just one of the few films where you can use separate actors and and because of right. that time span and because of the grisliness of it as well, not just the time yeah. span, but the kind of like the uh, physical hardship of being on that island. Right. Um, right. Um, Although, sorry, sorry. Okay. Well, sorry, one of the good things is just like, yeah, the Americans sort of leave and the way that was done was really well like done. Like they kind of like, it's sort of like, it's just gradually disappear. Or do they run up? No, I think I'm confused. They just kind of gradually disappear. And then there's just long periods and they feel long as well of, mm. of them just kind of doing war games, but with, and, and, and but, but, you get lovely moments where you you'll see a villager kind of like fishing or uh you know doing something with you know because you know life has moved on fairly quickly once the americans have left um right, right. and what you yeah, what right. you don't realize is that the you know the whole thing ended um i'm guessing you know uh well the whole thing ended and and the, the uh, decree came out to surrender and everything, but they just didn't get it. So, uh, yeah, they're supposed to surrender to the Philippines, Filipinos uh, right. on the island. Right. And, and uh, so they're, they're, all the villagers are like, why are you fucking... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Surrender, kind of and, uh, and... So eventually this kind of tourist, kind of amateur explorer guy, mm. uh, whose name was um, uh, Suzuki something, uh, as played by Tiger and I can't know in this film, finds him, right? Um, mm. He says, and apparently this was true as well, he says, like, the three things he wanted to find was a wild panda and him and the Yeti. Mm. And uh, apparently he did die um, fairly young, like 39 years old. He did die in the Himalayas while searching for the Yeti. Uh, well, he probably so, felt like, if I can do... <laughs> This, uh, yeah, he, I can find an order. extraordinary guy actually. I think, like, you know, the very audacious, yeah, guy, yeah, you know. And uh, he does, he does find him, and 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 then he tries to kind of, um, yeah, to convince him to come out of the jungle. But, um, Onoda won't do it until his basically his commanding officer, the Ogata Ese character, comes and officially re relinquishes him of his duty. Right, mm -hmm. and again, absolutely true. Right, all this yeah. stuff is true, and he had to go there, and and, and uh, yeah, and I, I agree with you towards the end, and when he's actually leaving, and and that kind of there's that scene where he gets on the helicopter and he like lifts his feet up off the ground, mm -hmm. and all that is just yeah, it's it's um, it's it's Huge kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, 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 and you're not even quite sure why. Exactly. It's it's such a it's such a it's it's one of those stories I think which is like you're not quite sure what emotion you're having. I mean, like, are you are you pleased or sad or all that lost time or are you also there's like a little bit weird kind of even though it's a really I mean you shouldn't really celebrate the fact that someone has been brainwashed and groomed to this extent, but there's also a a sort of pride as well that he stayed there, and it's a very complicated. I'd say the overwhelming emotion for me was was sadness, like that mm. that he he um that he because I think and and that maybe that's where the the empathy part, uh, uh, you know, with everything he's that all the triumphs that he's had, I guess, if you know, if you can call them that, like. Mm. Um, you know the triumphs of survival 
come in but it is that it's the it's the thing like we all get cajoled and misled throughout life or you know or mm. you know it, it's it, it's the sort of like it's the overwhelming power of authority um mm. and how it how it can uh can uh, kind of uh you know completely dictate his actions um mm -hmm. to the extent that you know because it because there's an interplay isn't there because he he he's sort of willfully gone with this secret unit and got a lot of joy from it and also uh from being part of the com camaraderie of that that secret unit and the sort of self-worth and self-respect of being with that uh you know with being with this elite squad um that um that that it, it kind of completely overwhelms his life and that's why the, the, you know in contrast to be hit with the reality that that in his entire reality was was already gone uh so early on <laughs> before he realized that's it's, it's such a tragedy you know um and that's sort of like uh sort of somehow has you know, sums up life in general in a way that you mm. um you know no matter what you do uh you kind of uh you know it's all for naught or whatever <laughs> it's all it's all it, it's it's all in service of uh you know something kind of the you know that that isn't i don't know that isn't it, that great <laughs> as you imagined it you know um, right right like yes is that all there is right like yes exactly uh, you know um and but but he lived it so fiercely <laughs> you know right, that, right. That, that's where the sort of i feel like that's where the tragedy and the empathy comes in you're like you, you kind of you could put whoever you are you can probably put like your own tragic uh empathy story into it like oh it's a bit like right. when i right. really wanted a puppy and, then, <laughs> and i wanted one for 10 years and then finally my mum got me a cat and, you know, i'm really crying <laughs> it's just like that um, my, my, that cat is my, right, my cat is right here listening disgusted at every word you're saying <laughs> um, but um yes i see what you're saying there, there there is that even though it's a very specific story yes there there are entry points for empathy right and um yeah but, but yes no i but uh, yeah i really thought when it when it was all done that i thought this was a pretty good um a pretty good film and like you said not really a moment wasted it's long but it's not mm. overly long it's kind of the length it should be yeah really and uh yes the 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 highlight of uh uh spoilers the highlight of this three film watch for me i have to say yeah yeah it was the best film so everyone can stop watching that yeah <laughs> unless they, yeah we probably should have done this one last <laughs> but i doubt no one will yeah, whatever uh, no one gets that we're that. not quite as good at pacing <laughs> no no we should we could take a leaf out of harari's book right yeah i think so Anyway, we what we do to... is we bide our time in the in the jungles of YouTube, yeah. hiding, and then we'll pounce yeah. in a few decades' time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll leap onto into um, Joe Rogan's podcast in a few <laughs> years' time and burn it to the ground. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, right, shall we move on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, no doubt, a, a definite. Um, it's a definite must see. I def think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree. So, uh, less of a must see, yeah. uh, and even longer at pretty much three hours. Yeah. Is the battle at Lake Changjin? 
yeah. a Chinese film, apparently mm -hmm. the most expensive Chinese production of yep. all time, and also I think the biggest hit Chinese film of all time yeah, as well. I, think it's, I mean, it, massive. The, the the budget must have mainly been extras because the, the extras was was colossal. Yeah, and um, so for context as well, so the 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 lead in it, Wu Jing. Uh, prior to this, had also directed and starred in the two Wolf Warrior films, which again were just you know didn't didn't really affect much of the rest of the world, but were just massive domestic hits in China. Mm -hmm. I guess it's, it, it's the thing we've talked about this before when we did some Ch mainland Chinese films before, but it is fascinating because it is seems to be almost a uh, market onto itself, right? The Chinese film market, like they don't, they don't need to care about anyone else watching these films. They have enough people yeah. uh, of their own going to see this stuff. And yeah, um, that's, that is interesting. Yeah. I, mean, like, well, I, I suppose Bollywood's a bit like that as well. Right? This is true. This is true, actually, as well. Yeah. Um, but I suppose in the case of this film, it's interesting because it's how it feeds into the kind of the propaganda element of it and and it's fascinating because this is very i'd say this is sophisticated propaganda in so much as you don't really get propaganda films so much nowadays that tell outright lies it's more the it's more the propaganda of a mission right? it's the it's the things that they they don't mention or conveniently skip over right so mm. so in the case of this film so so basically this is about um what was also known as the Battle of Choshin Reservoir. Mm -hmm. And um, this was when the uh, People's Volunteer Army of China helped um, the North Koreans, uh, you know, hold this reservoir and kind of turned the tide of the war, right? And sent the Americans fleeing back south until they yeah, went all yeah. the way down to the other end until, of course, they finally... Um, managed to fight back at Incheon, right, and um, regain land up until uh, I forget which parallel it is, but and and there, the uh, parallel, yeah. There we go, and there's the divide, right? There's the 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 north south divide. So, but interestingly, from this film's point of view, um, mm. it's f it's funny because it begins and there's no mention of. North Korea invading South Korea. There's no mention of a civil war. It starts with, and the Americans invaded North Korea. Yeah, oh, ha having said that, though, having said that, um, I mean, with regards to that particular thing, from what I've read, because uh, I also saw another a, a YouTube video from an American, uh, mm. his, his it's like animated history or something, thinking, uh -huh. and then I, but then I thought, oh, well, oh, and I read about it, and that the American guy had completely left out that, um, that uh, because before this, mm. it was you know it was the um, it was the Russians and and the Chinese, uh, you know, well because the Japanese had control over Manchuria, Korea. yeah, yeah, and then and then uh, and then. I can't remember what happened, but um, and this is only me reading it quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, and then the the Soviets and the uh, Chinese, well, mainly the Soviets, they they uh, took control of the north. Yes, and the Americans took control of the uh, south. Right, and they they could well they their their armies met on the thirty eighth, whatever um, precinct or whatever you call it. Parallel, parallel. That's the word, yeah. and. Um, and uh, and that's where the the, the north to south divide, and they've right. been at war ever since, haven't they? Yes, so they're yeah. technically still at war. The yeah, it's an armistice, right? Yeah, but um, the thirty eighth pineapple. But they both they both yes, <laughs> they both installed their own. So this American historian on YouTube was saying, you know, and the, the communists installed a mm. dictator, uh, you know, Kim Il Sung, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then the Americans also installed their own dictator and both of them did huge yeah, atrocities. The, yes, yes, the, the, the anti-communist uh, kind of, um, the anti-communist um, 
uh, killings by yeah the re yeah. government was yeah just yes a very under um, uh, kind of underreported element of 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 that time. It's true. Um, so I didn't I didn't get up to the point though. Um, I don't really have enough time, but um, up to the point where I really understood uh, why this war happened in the sense that um, it, because it's not as simple as either one or the other, I think, you know. No, that's, that, this is true. It wasn't as if it was, you know, the South Koreans are all, you know, dancing around naked in fields and suddenly the b barbarians from the north. No, no, it's, it's not quite that. Uh, you're quite right. That that obviously it is um, somewhat more complicated, but yeah. but it is interesting that they leave it out totally here, and it's just yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Well, yeah I just in, similar, when I went to when I went to Vietnam uh, to Saigon and you visit the Vietnam War Museum, it's fascinating because there's no mention of it there either. And <laughs> looking around the museum, you just think that the Americans just attacked us. They just came out <laughs> the skies. For no reason, yeah. all of a sudden. Um, but, but I mean, you know, for me, it was just it was just like a. I'll go, I haven't watched a war. I've watched more war films in the last two days than I've watched <laughs> in the last um, twenty years because I haven't right. watched. I don't think I've watched a war film really for you know. But um, I was thinking, like, is it a bit like Platoon or Hamburger Hill? You know the the. It, in the, or, or I don't know if any of the kind of um, I've n I never watched Hurt Locker or something. In, in terms of propaganda, it seemed mm. kind of like um, American in its kind of uh, yeah. Well, like I said, it's kind of it, triumphalist propaganda in a way. It was quite interesting to watch that because from the other side, yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, nowadays pro propaganda is kind of more sophisticated in a way because in so much as yeah they do it that way they just skip things rather than try and necessarily paint like the americans in this film they're you know they're not that cartoonishly evil or anything like that like, like they didn't make them out to be sure. really yeah they, it, they were just kind of just plain and whoever you know like well the kind of work i do here i do, i'm assuming yeah. they just took a big net out and caught all the white people living in Seoul and put them in uniforms and gave them lines, right? And, uh, you know, they're of variable quality, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that, that was one of the interesting things was just because, you know, in an uh, in American film, you'll get, you know, a Chinese guy and it will be an awful stereotype, but as a Westerner, we, you know, who are more familiar with American and, you know, um, or British acting or whatever, or Europe, you know, um, you can see that it's bad, but you can't quite see. Yeah, exactly. How bad yeah. It is. And, and plus as well, uh, like we said, because they don't give a shit if the rest of the world sees it, they don't care either. As long as they're just, they can move and talk and it's enough to signal to the domestic audience that they're Americans. They don't have to give great performances, right? Well, that's what I was trying to say. Is it, it, it's like when they have a Chinese person in a Hollywood film who's like just there for cannon fodder or whatever. Mm. And, you know, they're, they're this sort of ridiculous cliche. It was fun to watch the opposite way around where mm. the Americans are. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're caricatures, but they're, they're, they're more sophisticated, like you say, than just like... <laughs> But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really, still quite. Um, yeah. It's less know. fun for me because I've been forced to be that person <laughs> several times. So, um, the American I can especially. feel the frustrations of some of these people because some of them are probably like half. Some of them probably don't give a shit, and some of them might be harboring, uh, you know, um, you, uh, you know, dreams of acting properly well, in some... I, 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 I keep picturing like you know the thespians like and and they you know is it have you ever seen that film hollywood shuffle where yes uh, yeah of course yeah be more like eddie murphy i always see that <laughs> yeah 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 um where, where they're, they're probably doing that um 
to you know the, the, the american guys kind of like i think we should go like in this direction and uh like, okay but, no, that, that's great but can you make it more american <laughs> I, it's gonna be american either. I had an experience, very similar experience. It was quite amusing doing a reconstruction drama, and it was the story of. Um, do you remember? There, were, I never saw it. There was a Jim Carrey film called "I Love You, Philip Morris" or something like that, and it was based on a true story about some guy who who broke out of prison to be with his gay lover, mm. and 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 um, and I think he did it like. Uh, he managed to get steal like lots of ink pens from the commissary or something, and he he hoarded them until he could create like a he had enough ink in his sink in his cell, and then he could dip like an uniform into it, which was the same color as the guard's uniform or something like that, and he was able to escape by posing as a guard. Right? Anyway, there's like a there was a scene, and I played that character. There's a scene in it where I'm trying to get some uh, some of these ink pens off someone, uh, some other inmate who's in charge of, you know, that he's got the keys to the locker or whatever with the ink pen. Mm. And it, was, it was played by a, a black guy, black American actor. And um, so the, we did it over and over again. Like I'd go up to him and say, hey, you know, you got any pens or whatever? And he's like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Were you, you know. supposed to be American then? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, okay. uh, it's all dubbed in Japanese anyway. Oh so yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so and 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 this uh, this black guy was, um, you know, he was just doing it fine, you know. But it wasn't exactly what they wanted. It was it was kind of. It's. I'm glad the guy didn't realize because he was quite new to Japan, so I don't think he understood. But I could immediately sense what they meant. They coded language because they kept going up to him and they their their direction to him because i suppose what they wanted him to be with they wanted him to be the kind of the stereotyped kind of brother on the inside you know who you know has experience who knows the street you know who was you know they, they wanted that kind of and this guy was you know he was quite, like quite preppy and not not the stereotyped uh, black guy that they wanted right and and the, the only bit of direction they kept telling him was uh, shizeni, shizeni, shizeni gahogai, which means like a, be natural, just do it naturally. And I think what they would meant, you know, you know, like you would in an in the hood, you know, where you're from, because you're kind of, ah, I knew exactly what they were trying to tell him. Mm. But they were, yeah, just be natural, just be your normal criminal black self, you know. It's, so that's a very um, yeah similar kind of yeah. Experience. No, I, I I do feel, I I got the sense a lot of the time that um after each take they were going oh. <laughs> <It> ah <was> so <laughs> bad yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah I've been there done that got the t shirt <laughs> but yeah but it's it's fun though in a way because I, I'm sure that Chinese actors who go to you know. Um, Hollywood probably feel the same where they're yeah like, yeah know, I would imagine um, so and it's just fun to <laughs> to have it is fun to watch that it is also fun to watch like the Americans is this sort of terrifying because maybe not in well I'm sure that that it was felt in this war but you know this war like we just talked about was incredibly complicated and messy mm. but um in terms of sort of America or British occupying forces and, and and some of the stuff that uh you know these two countries have done around the world mm. you know seeing seeing them as this terrifying ultra jacked up to the max <laughs> right uh, invading force. Yeah. yeah invading force with you know unbelievable weapons is uh you know is is it was quite terrifying you know in that sense you know that that was quite right. Um, yeah, so, so so the conceit here as well is that, um, which, is, and again, this is kind of interesting because it's not entirely, that even, even though, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of sentiment and stirring patriotic mm. scenes and all that stuff definitely from the propaganda playbook, but doesn't necessarily mean that everything is bullshit. So the conceit here is that 
uh, Douglas MacArthur was very much kind of power crazed after his, you know, um, you know, being installed in Tokyo as like the the emperor, basically, um, for, for so for a few years that he was basically ignoring um, Truman's orders and you know, was thinking, well, once we reach the Yellow River, let's just keep going. Let's just keep mm-hmm. going into China and take down the commies or whatever, which is not entirely made up from what I understand. I, I think mm-hmm. there was the sense that MacArthur might, um, if he didn't hadn't had his ass handed to him at the Battle of Shoshin, might have tried for, you know, um, of course, Truman would have probably shut him down, but but there was that sense that so the idea of this people's volunteers army because the way that the film places it is it makes them heroic because they're defending their homeland right it's not that they're mm. they don't even in fact i would i would say the koreans even get short thrift in this film you hardly see any north koreans or sure. anyone right it's it's all chinese versus americans it's turned into this proxy war which i suppose it was in it a was way a proxy war, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but yeah. um but in this, it's so like it's just we're defending our yeah. homeland, and and there's a scene like when they're on the train and they look out and there's the Great Wall of China going past them, and you know, and it's all yeah, it's all very sentimental and stirring, and but like you said, not necessarily something that they're not guilty of doing in the West as well. Right? Well, no, I mean, uh, I would say that the the film we're about to talk about after this is is very similar, actually. That the parallels right. are, are 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 there. I don't. I don't. Did you see Dunkirk? I didn't see Dunkirk. I, just, I if I had I another yeah. British, the only film I've seen that's actually I hadn't. This this warish related was Dad's Army, but it's but you know. Oh, okay, the remake. Yeah, I saw that with my son in the cinema, was it? and that was. You know, it, we we are at this point of sort of nationalistic. Um, I don't know, uh, sort of circle jerking or whatever. Where, yes. yes. Um, this where, post kind of Brexit. Um, yeah, but all, all, also between the different political powers. So I wonder if there's a sort of similar thing going around between the Russians and you know the Chinese and and various people, right, right. You know, various you know uh, global leaders. But there's you know there's this you know the circle jerk of America. You know, and, and so you have the, you know, you'll have scenes where an American turns up and um, he's all glamorous or whatever, you know, in, in the war. Uh, um, yeah, so um, Dad's Army was a was a was a was a propaganda piece. You know, it was it was, yeah, it was amusing in places, but it was so dripping with sentimentality and right, so right. fucking full of its national pride and, you know. Um, that it's but obviously the, the the second world war is slightly more straightforward but the the, the first world war which is the film we're going to talk about next mm. you know f- fucking why not straightforward right. in any way was it you cannot pick a good side in that war fuck you if you think you can and mm. it's a fucking mess and um uh, uh, and that the the, the 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 that film we'll get to it robert yeah we'll get to it anyway yeah. so so, but it's funny how I wonder if there are Chinese people who watch this film and they're just like, oh, you fuck, <laughs> you know, because when, well, it's your, when yeah, you're being yeah. sold your own propaganda, you know, the majority of people you know, lap it up. You know, everyone loved fucking Dad's Army, and ever, you know, um, and pro- you know, the Guardian write up of the film we're about to talk about was all it was kind of it did have a little bit of criticism at the end, but um, but for the well, Guardian yes. write up for this film. Yeah, uh, you know, it was totally scathing, like oh, the right, propaganda, right. is it? But yeah, they, they, I suppose, they're really I very suppo- similar. Yeah, in, I, I, I suppose it's it's difficult for some people to separate the 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 entertainment from the the political as well, right? So, in so much as yes, it is propaganda, propagandistic to a certain point. But the thing is, um, I fucking where was my train of thought going? There. Yeah, I suppose their larger argument would be if you make a film like that in the UK or America, there's plenty of avenues where 
you can criticize it or complain it. And, and, but I suppose the argument would be, yes, there probably are viewers in China watching this and going, this is, this is crap, but they're somewhat more restricted in their ability to voice those. Yeah, opinions. they may do. I, I have no idea, really. I'm a, you know, I think you would have to live in China to... To know for to sure, really, yeah. To really yeah, know exactly. what that's like, you know. Absolutely. It's, 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 it, it's very difficult to... Like, a, just uh, a quick aside, just in terms of propaganda, or, or because, you know, the, the, it's the, also the effect of propaganda and the way... Because I think the thing is, the Western powers did propaganda in a similar way to mm. know, China, Russia during the war and stuff. But that as capitalism kind of and and uh, you know um, globalization increased and stuff, the, the methods of propaganda got more. They are more advanced in the mm. West than they are, you know, um, in 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 say in in China. And so it is the, but is the question for me is, is the effect still the same? So just, just, it's not a big point or anything, but it's just like, I watched, um, I watched, watched Fully Charged today on, uh, on, on YouTube, which is about uh, um, kind of electric cars and, and renewable uh, hmm. energy sources and whatnot. And one is of the like, people- uh... Is this is this like the Guardian's Top Gear, like the Echo? It is, it is like the Echo. But I don't really watch it for the cars though. I watch it for the um. So the one I was watching was about. I, I like it. Uh, this, I just watch it for sort of technological development in renewable energy. You know, but um, the, the, there's this one of their people is from it, it, correspondence is from China, hmm. and every time he does a video because china is advancing so much faster than the west with regards to renewable energies mm -hmm. you know you can do they they do loads they're doing like that you could they have affordable cars you can get for like a grand or whatever you know yeah. um in, in they also dump more trash everywhere than anywhere else well yeah like, but I mean, kind of part, partly certain. though it's is the west it, it they also take all of it where we there's a, you know, we um, export loads of our recycling to China mm. and they burn mm. it, whatever. Um, but, um, you know, but every time um, they, this guy does a video on China, he was doing a video on uh, the uh, bullet trains in China. Uh, mm. they, you always get in the comments, right? Oh, has this become a propaganda piece for the, you know, for the for the Chinese government, and it's like, well, you know, because you you're just proving that the opposite propaganda also works. In that, if someone is saying something good about China, you feel immediately that you have to, you right? Are, you have to say obliged to uh, you are obliged yeah. to say uh, of your own free will. Uh, completely of your own free will, that yeah, yeah. this is, uh, you, you, but because someone always has to say it, and that not just one person, several right. people always right. have to say it, no yeah. matter what. Um, yeah. And that's, you know. But well, this goes back, though, is that basically the point you're making is going back to the whole thing about bread and circuses, right? Like, you, 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 people think they're free, right? And they have their entertainments and stuff, and they don't realize that they're still being manipulated. But you're just being done in a way where you, th the the thoughts you think you're arriving at yourself, um, you've yeah. you've reached your own conclusion, but you haven't really been given all the data to reach yeah. that conclusion. Yeah, I, I always get confused as to why people think they know the truth. I'm I'm always looking for the truth, but like I never really feel like I fully. You know, yeah. there's certain things I can tell are not true, but I. I I never really no, feel like I read a great, um, I, I've, I've started reading some Chekhov plays recently and Chekhov had a really nice quote. Um, I'm going to paraphrase it and butcher it, but some, something along the lines of um, only fools and charlatans think that they know things and understand everything, mm. which I think is quite a good, because I'm, I'm with yeah. you. I'm, I'm, I, I know I'm, ignorant of lots of things but i think that's the first step is 
knowing that you're ignorant and 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 just accepting you know what i don't know and the number of people who are afraid Sorry, Clive, even... one second i've got to yeah. turn my my plug on because my battery is about to run out oh that could be a disaster so i shall fill while robin there go. oh there we go. okay i don't know why you did have to do a really long fill <laughs> um Damn, I've got my fill sheet for <laughs> nothing. 50 anecdotes written now. <laughs> oh well. But 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 yeah, so 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 um the, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly a little bit as well is just you know, propaganda isn't necessarily always a dirty word. So you mentioned earlier, yeah. for instance, in the case of World War Two, which as you said, even though there's there are shades of grey there as well to a certain extent, it's slightly more cut and dry uh good guys, bad guys stuff. And you think about the films they made just after the Second World War, even during the Second World War, for mm. propagandistic purposes. And they don't necessarily seem so offensive, right? Because it seems as if, yes, these films have an agenda and they very much definitely have an agenda and there's no way around it. But but that's okay. Like, yeah. you don't, you don't, they don't seem so, but it's interesting, some of them, the older they get, actually like so i tell you a good example i was showing my wife the other day the dam busters she'd never seen mm. the dam busters which is a great film i think the dam busters is a really really great film but it, uh, what amazed me was i'm now like 40 um whatever years old and uh, old enough to forget the exact number but it took me until this watch you know and you know uh, uh bands wallace and all that and they successfully you know blow up the dam and the the floods and it was the first time i've ever in my life watched this film thought hang on how surely there's there's thousands of innocent people gonna be killed in that deluge of water right and then i went to look it up and sure enough there are some i didn't realize this there were some people even at the time who condemned this as a war crime mm. Uh, you know, this extremely celebrate, da, 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 yeah. you know, well, and it was okay. interesting to me. It, it kind of, I still think it's a great film in terms of filmmaking, but it was fascinating to me that this was the first time it had ever occurred to me that the Dam Busters was somewhat morally dubious. Yeah. I mean, the, the, um, the, the, um, I've got two thoughts in my head, so, but, um, Write one down. Go well, so, well, first of all, Churchill. I don't. I don't know if you've. Have you ever seen a a bad portrayal of Churchill? You know, like a trail. Oh, you mean like a negative, negative um, portrayal of Churchill? I've read. I don't I've know read if is. more than I've seen. Yeah, no, a filmic, but, but it's it, it's significant. This filmic that I, I don't know what about anything about Chinese literature though. So I wouldn't know where there's more critic but there's always more there's always more criticism in in uh, literature than there is in in films i, I guess i don't know that's yeah, a, yeah. a sweeping statement but um you know well no, it's just it's you can just do more with the fun just go deeper right in a, in yeah, a, 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 yeah. A, possibly bury stuff in because less people are going to read it yeah, exactly. it's less yeah um but They're less uh, yeah i, I mean, Chir Churchill, read a book but their status him, right? is still so sacrosanct in this country that you know you're still seen as a, a almost a traitor if you and, and, and like I say na nationalist fervor has, has got much worse now um uh well I mean you can almost you can almost see whenever I see Boris Johnson on TV nowadays yeah. and you think my god he <laughs> he must be he was silently going, woohoo! He must be so glad Russia invaded Ukraine because mm. he, he was in so much trouble with the Met investigating him and everything for those, mm. you know, meetings during lockdown and stuff like that. And all of a sudden this comes along and it's his chance, right? It's his chance yeah. to become he's, the Churchill he's always he's wanted like a, to be. He's like a rubber latex Churchill. He's just yeah, a he is. Churchill. He's a spitting image puppet of Churchill. <laughs> <It's Yeah. true. laughs> um, anyway, um, so back to the film, because <laughs> that's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, so all that aside then, because I think we've kind of, I think we've talked about that. Uh, I, I think we've made our feelings clear on that. All that aside, 
does it work? Because this film had three directors as well. You got Chen mm, yeah. Kei, Choi Hak, and Dante Lam. Apparently, Once Upon a Time to have been directed by Ronald Ronald Emmerich. Apparently, amazingly, okay. the, the guy who made the shitty Godzilla remake back in 1998 and uh, Independence oh, okay. Day, and he almost directed this when uh, Godzilla was played by Jamiroquai. <laughs> yeah, that's the word, yeah. That's how I remember it. <laughs> um, yeah, so so um, there's three directors working on it, and uh, I, I, I'm assuming, uh, you know, endless CGI technicians yeah. as well. Fucking hell, there's a lot of CGI. And of variable quality as well, like, yeah, some some shots were really quite awful well, that, that, for a big the, budget that, film, and then some were, oh, that's pretty decent. Yeah, and looks I mean, that, that's because I think there's a slight in, in, inexperience, also just overly ambitious. If you have a sweeping vista in the daytime, and you know they did they kept doing that, and that's fucking really hard to do. That's like. Yeah, the, yeah, the pinnacle of CGI almost. No one really no. does that without darkening it and you know right. messing it up. Right. But they. I had... remember you you explained this to me before because you have slightly more practical experience. There, there's a lot to be said for putting your CGI in the dark. It does well, a lot. Of I don't form. personally like like that. I like to, to be in ambitious. Well, we talked about that in um, was what was the hairy whale film again? <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Oh, uh, something. Yeah, I can't even remember the title of it, but yeah. Well, we'll have to go. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. If you do it in the daytime, then uh, then then you you have to work so much harder to get it right. But um, but mm. then this sweeping vista with like there's there were several of them, weren't there, with boats yeah. and stuff and yeah, yeah, and, and they were just look really flat. And... Yeah, it, it looked really bad, but it, it it almost looked good. And the problem is as well, I think like. You look at a still of it and it will look okay. Right, right. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's when it moves, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but then some of the some of the some of the battle stuff, and again, it did take place in the dark, so that helps. But some of the some of the stuff with the tanks, some of the tank skirmishes, some of that stuff looked pretty good. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. looked pretty impressive. But overall, I mean, I mean, it's too fucking long for a start, yeah. and. And amazingly, as well, I was like, oh, thank God. I've wooed. And, and then at the very end of the film, when they run the credits, there's a fucking sequel, right? <laughs> Which came out earlier this oh, year, what, I think. Yeah. Really? Yeah, there's a battle at the Changin 2. Yeah. What? Why? Well, that's the thing I couldn't figure out because uh, aren't they all there? Because <laughs> there's that's the whole thing is right they find the the frozen platoon of soldiers who died defending and the americans like mm. salute yeah, yeah them yeah. right and, and all that and and i was like okay the, there we go the story's been told but yeah there's a battle at lake changing too um mm. which came out earlier this year uh i haven't seen it i'm not sure if i have the stamina to no, watch I don't. But another um, th three hours it, i'm it, guessing it, they were probably shot back to back could be yeah uh, because well the film essentially looks like it ends and then there's there's a sort of that's probably the most propaganda bit is this sort of uh you know it is the uh summing it up bit. yes and then yes, they do some yeah. more fighting uh because yeah, oh we we well, actually shot the entire history of that uh, uh, right that's the sequel so yeah oh that's the sequel yeah, that's oh, like coming. I was watching a se I was watching an intro to the sequel. I yes, thought I was exactly. just watching a kind of like little follow up bit, like no, bit no, like no, that's mash the... or something at the end, like yeah, no, no, that's after the credits. Thing is, like you said, the summing up of that thing is half. It's not exactly untrue. It is. It is correct that it was mm. the turning point of the war, and the, the, but it was it was couched in that way where it was like we stood up to U.S. aggression. You know, mm. and um, and yeah, clearly yeah. putting it in the larger context of of now as well, right? That's the thing. It's it's not just yeah. propaganda for then; it's propaganda for now, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, the the thing is, uh, like I say, well, we, uh, we'll get onto this a little bit, but about the other film, but is you know, and um, that kind of triumphalism is not as like it's not present in 
in other films, but I, I think the way um, the summing it up in a kind of uh, uh, in that manner is a little bit um, it would be too on the nose maybe but uh, yeah, I don't know actually because yeah. sometimes they do it's, it's very hard to decipher because like we were talking about you know our propaganda is our propaganda so we almost feel protective of it yeah but it's like <laughs> you know um, whereas other propaganda um, is more uh, kind of uh, uh, seems slightly offensive. Like, oh, yeah, no, I, I suppose, that's, that's, that's a load of nonsense. I, or I whether we understand our propaganda in and out. So even if we're against it, we we kind of understand what it's for, the way it works, you know, from the inside out. And we don't, we're not privy to that to other people's propaganda, right? Whereas if you were, you'd probably be sympathetic to it as well, right? To a certain extent. Yeah, like, in a way, it's like it's like. Um, say you're you're friends with a couple and you get along quite well or whatever but then one time you meet them they have a kind of more frank and open or uh, or, or or an argument or something uh and it kind of it scrapes more of the surface of their dirty laundry or whatever mm. uh, you know their, their relationship um then it feels really super uncomfortable and weird um maybe it's a bit like that like when when you see other people's icky propaganda <laughs> right it, it feels a bit right um, like uh ew kind of uh yeah yeah i want yeah. my propaganda back um <laughs> right right <laughs> it's just kind of a strange it's a strange thing um uh, i had another thing but i can't, I can't about just yeah so what so so my takeaway was this film was too fucking long and it had mm. a few kind of impressive scenes but overall uh i didn't really like it much what did you make of the battle at chang jin uh, well you know like i said it was a little bit like pl platoon the battles and the kind of uh, machismo and stuff uh, and all these films had kind of bromances uh, uh, well this film as well was it, I, <laughs> it always signaled it had a, like a little like a like a almost medieval sounding little like flute <laughs> thing that would come in. Oh, it's time for some light-hearted japery, right? <laughs> Amongst the troops. Like every single time oh, it's that fucking <laughs> flute sound again. So you, you didn't even have to yeah. think like, oh, this bit is not this is not going to be serious. It's yeah, gonna be, yeah. you know, someone yeah. reading out someone else's letter and everyone makes fun of him and then and someone yeah. steals someone's hat or whatever the fuck. Oh, the one thing I was gonna say to be fair was that um that, come on no be fair to be fair like right, they, they did on. they did show more of it because if you think about films like platoon yeah like in platoon you know the vietnamese are just cannon fodder you never get to know any of them you know it's all um completely from the americans point of view in this film to be fair they did show some of the um americans Little, not yeah yeah, yeah. and i just uh, realized as well, earlier when you, said seen, you haven't seen a, ho a, a war film in 20 years you weren't kidding because it seems the last war film you saw was platoon <laughs> it was platoon, platoon i saw was a lot it, it's just sort of for me platoon or or hamburger hill they're the kind of um classic american films where they do try to um american war films i mean they mm. do try to Kind of do a nuanced uh, look at the um, the, the American. They, they fail miserably. Hamburger Hill. Hamburger Hill is 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 again. It's they were they're trying to take the Hamburger Hill. Um, yes, it's called no, Hamburger I know what Hill. it is. I just have never seen it. Uh, yeah, I mean I can't remember it, but it's kind of classic in that both Platoon and those ones. They've always got like that, that's why it was that similar because. They've always got their picture of you know their loved one at home and there's, there's right, these different right. cliches and conventions yeah, yeah, that yeah. um come through and you know that that guy who's got his loved one is going to get he's the one who's going to st like step that. on a mine right he's yeah, the one exactly yeah. and, and um you know and the one who can whittle something you know there's always whittling some there's always a whittler you know, he's usually native one. american as well in those films right the whittler 
he's usually a Native American as well, right? He's the Whitler, is he's the <laughs> well, stoic, or, or, the stoic uh, Native Indian who doesn't say anything, but when yeah, he does yeah. say something, it's worth listening to, yeah. right? Because sometimes right? people come and other times they die. Lord. Yeah. That's why. Wow. Right. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the other one is, you know, you do, they're whittling the whole fucking, and you don't actually know what it is they're making, but then there'll be like a, they'll put it on the table and yeah. it'll be something ever so apt to what they've been yeah, talking yeah. about. It'll be symbolic. Yeah. Made you toilet paper holder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sorry. <laughs> Should we move on? Um, yes, yes. Lest you offend any more <laughs> Native Americans. Let's, yeah. yeah, let's move on then to uh, the last of a triple bill. Uh, so this was the war below. Mm. And this was a goddamn British film about the plucky Tommy. Uh, in yes, in the first world war, directed by JP Watts, and and this is the story again, true story. Um, well, it's interesting, so it's an um, interesting story, yeah, it is an interesting story, but also it's not quite the so. In this version of the story, it's um, I think it's the song, right? But it's specifically it's the Battle of Messine in 1970. There was a few Battle of Messines, and uh, apparently in 1916, the year before, there was another extremely similar operation, but it was miners from Australia. Mm. And they made a film about that called Beneath Hill 60, which I haven't seen, but apparently oh, yeah. it's quite good. Um, I, I'm thinking that might be a more interesting watch than, than this. Oh no, but, sorry, um, that wasn't the short film, was it? Okay. Yeah. No, no, that was a full length film. Okay, yeah. But anyway, um, so in this case, yes. So uh, they need to take, uh, They obviously, you know, this they're, they're stuck in this, you know, trench, warfare they're not mm. taking any land and uh, the german bunkers are too they're too deep so the artillery the shelling isn't doing much good so one uh hellfire what was his name hellfire john as played by uh, tom goodman hill mm. he um he has the bright idea of um getting some miners from i think manchester way right clay miners because it's they're not leads i thought they were leads anyway carry on oh, i could be leads. um because it's all it's clay in the, in, in, the, in in um uh, what's that area called it's not the arden what's the what the, what is that area of the oh, song um i forget right I don't remember. Uh, uh, yeah well the cat's back in so i have to close the door again okay. um so um yeah. Anyway, so he hires these clay miners, and obviously they they learned from that from that classic film Armageddon. <laughs> um, they learned that it's easier to train astronauts to use a drill than actually teach, um, you know, drillers how to pilot a spaceship <laughs> and go into space because that's the whole problem with Armageddon, isn't it? Is, why didn't they do it the other way round? But in this case, yeah, the idea is first. Well, you're going to you're going to train our guys to, and then mm. and then they were like, well, why don't you just take us there, and then mm. maybe teach us how to fire a gun, and led by uh, uh, Sam Hazeldean is the the main guy who's desperate to prove himself in war, right? Mm. And uh, they go there, and they they don't get any, they don't get no respect from the moustache twirling twat officer class mm. um, and and other soldiers as well are wondering why aren't you fighting you're in here you know just they seem like they're just hiding out or something but they're yeah. busy building building tunnels to take down the bosch um, which they do yep they, very effectively yeah they our take boys. Out, yes our lads yeah um, uh, uh, yeah uh, no so interesting, yes. I, I, so not a great film. I didn't. It was think. pretty low budget as well, wasn't it? So I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, in terms of that, I think they did, did a lot good with job. it. Yeah, they did. Yeah. To be fair, they did 
fair play, no. They did do a good job with all that. Um, no, I think I think the problem with this film, though, and it's interesting you mentioned this, because I was surprised, you, you're probably a bit more, because you're still in the UK, mm-hmm. and you're probably a bit more familiar, so it's probably slightly less shocking to you, maybe. For me, I was actually quite surprised in this day and age that this was such a kind of triumphalist, like, uh, Sacrif- especially when you're talking about the first world, like notoriously yeah. the lions led by donkeys or whatever, mm. and they get into that a little bit, but it feels very much like lip well, service. Right? Yeah, At the end I mean, of the day, yeah. they're still like, "Well done, lads! Yeah, you killed yourselves for you know queen and yeah. country." And I was surprised to have that laid on so thick in a 2021. I guess it's come full circle again, right? Because Growing up, we didn't get films like this when, when we were younger, right? Because it wasn't cool to be patriotic. Yeah, um, well, I mean, if you want to contrast it, if anyone wants to watch two films completely different, you could watch the the film Peter Lou by uh, Mike Lee, isn't it? Ah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was good. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was sort of like, it feels like to get the funding, they went... F- pushing all the right buttons you know that's how right so it, it, it in the sense that the the chinese propaganda film was state funded well this might have been state funded but that one to get to get made maybe it was the top down whereas this mm. one it's bottom up voluntarily going oh you know well we you know it's a fantastic script it shows you know the bravery and blah 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 you know i don't know it's just it it, it could have been that but it, it there is a lot of that about and um quick and, tangent uh, by the way before i forget because uh, this is something i only just learned uh recently so the the free trade hall in manchester which is the place famously when the six sex pistols played there um mm-hmm. You know, there was like all these bands formed the next day, like Buzzcocks and uh, considered a very important gig. I didn't realize that free trade hall is actually built on the site of the Peterloo massacre. Oh shit! Mm, didn't know that. I only just learned that last night reading in the bath. That's a really good fact. Thanks. Man. I learned a good fact when we um, we were talking about this film. This, is, this shit film is the only film that I watched with my partner anyway. Um, mm. but uh, that uh, because you know the World War One, I, I, I have looked this up now. Probably it's about the sixtieth time I've looked it up, and I still don't know why World War One started. It is, yeah. I, 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 I know what you mean. I've done the same thing. I, I think I've read about three books on for the First World War and watched <laughs> endless documentaries. And then whenever someone corners me and and is just like, so how exactly did so who was fighting who and why? And uh, well, and I get about as far as Franz Ferdinand, yeah. I, and and then I'm and then, uh, and then it gets quite confusing. But, and I, uh, she found out that um, that that there was someone in the Siberian. I know is it no, it, or is it in the Aust- I know Franz Ferdinand was Austro-Hungarian or whatever, but. Right. Um, or, or Austrian. But there's someone who knew about the uh, assassination that was going to happen. And they went to warn whoever, not maybe not, Fr- it could have been Franz Ferdinand, but like, I don't know, he was in the bath or whatever. And um, it, the guy didn't want to disturb him too much and didn't want to uh, like make too much of a fuss over it. Okay. So basically, he t- warned Franz Ferdinand or someone close to him that he was going to be assassinated, but minced his words, and uh, and and so that the whole First World War could mm. have been potentially avoided with this one person, if only they they wouldn't have had a kind of shit day at work where they had a bit of a migraine and. Care. Oh, you, you're going to kind of be, um, I don't want to, 
well, you might get hurt. So <laughs> if you could sort of not go, uh, you know, there on Thursday uh, and instead maybe, I don't know, just like sort of do something else, uh, that would be great. And and then, yeah, not. But that was a strange story, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, the, uh, the that that the whole thing is uh, is is a complete mess. Yeah, I mean, it's like we said, it's not a badly made film in terms of like production values and stuff like that. It's it's fairly good looking, but but it's it's not even like um, it's not like a film where oh, okay, well, even if you put aside the 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 problematic stuff. It's it's still a rollicking great adventure or something, but it's not even that, right? It's not a particularly exciting. Well, I, I, I get so fed up with th this. Is why I feel like it's just pushing certain buttons for certain funders or something. Is because you know, because the way the British film industry is funded, you've got you've got your you know your independent bodies or whatever, um, but you also have um, kind of. I think you still get that kind of uh, film fund type thing where, you know, uh, like right. where, you well, know, hedge, hedge fund managers can yeah. get a tax relief by funding a film. So, so in order to fund for a film, you might want to push their buttons. But well, a lot of I, I see national lottery funding in, in front of a lot of British films still. Yeah, but that's sort of I find it so cloying the sort of the earth. Uh, I'm a minor, yeah, we're all good people up north, uh, you know. Right, um, right. And uh, yeah, it's, it's stereotype city, isn't it? This film, I mean, it's yeah, um, to an like, like I said, I, I wouldn't have been necessarily surprised if this was an older film, but to see hmm. a brand new film made in this way feels kind of retrograde in a way, and I don't want to place the blame or you know all the blame on this little film i don't have anything particularly against this film no it's, it's just but it's just it's a emblematic of of the state of britain at the moment in terms of its it's the nationalistic fervor and, and i mean if you if you live here it's like you know it's just what the fuck has happened like is you know there's so much of this bullshit around mm. and, and i don't know whether they you know but the it's why i'm interested in it would be so lovely to be able to speak to someone who's chinese who watched the the the, the you know uh chang Jin chang chang Jin Changin. film yeah with us um who thought that was fucking awful and could point out like right because because for 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 us it's like those, you know, the officer and the gentleman, you know, stereotype, for example. Yeah. Um, and he turns out to be an officer and a gentleman. How great is that? You know, so he's a right. cunt and a nice guy, uh, you know, it's, it's just but and has integrity. Yeah. Just, those, the fucking officers and in the First World War were to, to probably, I don't doubt there was a single good person amongst them. <laughs> They were probably they were all probably complete psychopaths. Like they were, right. you know, all sociopaths at least. Like yeah, yeah. And, and as well, it's it's like there's no cliche they don't want it. So also there's the the plucky wife at home. Like you know, yeah. don't tell me any of that nonsense about him being <laughs> a hero. <Good> <laughs> And he's ah oh, well, yeah. he's the most stubborn man I'd ever met. Yeah. Uh, ah, but he's stubborn. Ah, uh -huh. God, <laughs> he wears his hat on his sleeve. He does. Oh. <laughs> he puts his feet, his shoes on one foot at a time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was wondering if we were going to get through this episode without doing such shitty accents, Ray. <laughs> There's no yeah. accent we can't mangle. Yeah. I've done the Native American as well, didn't I? Pretty good. You did? Your range, darling, is superb. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm from Cherokee tribe originally, <laughs> yeah. up north. 
You get me out an hour on it, but you watch out, we I'll come after you with my hour on it, but just your class step more. Sorry, sorry, sir. Oh. <laughs> it's all going on. You're terrible. <laughs> to get there, you have to walk until the sun goes up and down three times and the buffalo can be seen <laughs> crossing the plain. Very nice. I think we redeemed ourselves. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so uh, I don't know what else is there to say about that film, really. Shut, shut up! <laughs> it is. It feels bad, doesn't it? Because you can see that um, they know they made a film on a low budget and whatnot. Yeah, thought. no, it's uh, yeah. To be fair, they did do a pretty good job. And again, in just filmmaking terms, and again, it's not really that overtly offensive. It's just yeah. It it, it just feels yeah. Like I said, it's retro. It just feels like not a film made in twenty twenty one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then there was a lot of reliant on 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 cliches, typical war film cliches again. Like the diary writing, all three of those films had diary writing in it. All they all sort of had the the wife, daughter, child back home type cliche mm. and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I did war films are strange. Uh, I don't know how. I mean, did you have a? Do you have like a? I guess so. It's interesting. I listen. Full Metal Jacket to, would probably be why. I listen to a, film, I guess. a podcast yeah. which has now been uh, cancelled, or one of the guys on it has been cancelled, so they don't do it anymore. But there was a podcast called Friendly Fire, where mm. they talk about war films, and I quite enjoy listening to that. It's it's quite interesting, and they they for and what uh, listening to that podcast actually kind of got me interested in because I've never really been a a fan of war films, to be honest with you. Like, I've, I've never been drawn to them. Mm. Very rarely have I been drawn to war films. Um, so I, I didn't watch a whole bunch of them. And then I suppose because I'm very now very interested, and i increasingly more interested in world history. And of course, when you get interested in world history, it's unavoidable that you get interested in certain wars and conflicts and stuff as well. And then combined with this um, uh, Friendly Fire podcast, I'm kind of now coming round to, oh, I should probably catch up with those war films that I didn't see. And I have more interest in war films than I've ever had before in my life. But I know what you mean. They're a difficult thing to, to they seem to be a difficult genre to pull off well, I think. Mm. Um, also, I mean, you've got to find a good story within the war, but um, just, uh, um, you know, is it, Oh, I forgot where I was going. Uh, it, it's just um, I don't know. The, the, it, do you ever learn anything from? <laughs> you know, I think. Well, what I was thinking was, you kind of do. You need. Do you feel like you need to know your history before you watch it, or you can't really learn your history from a war film, can you? So no, no. So but what, it, what it, it can from send it? you off. It can send you off down rabbit holes. It is the, the, that, that's how I watch them now. That's why they're interesting. So even if a film, that's why I'm interested in war films now is because I suppose it's because you can do the research really easily now with the internet. You can, yeah. so watching a war film isn't just about the film itself. It's the fact that for hours after I'll go off and research and learn something. So that makes them more interesting than just watching the film itself, right? Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I just... What I was wondering is, is it enhanced by knowing the research, having knowing before? You mean in advance? Yeah. Or is it because, um, because you know, uh, they are they are so they're almost propaganda, whether they want them to be or not. Like, um, by I suppose virtue. it's yeah. Unless you make some kind of sweeping twelve-hour epic that goes into each and every um, aspect that went into the war and why these people are doing it and why those, I, yes, I see what you mean. It's like you're almost, because you have to choose a side, not, not so much to, to, to back them, but 
to show, for example, or, yeah. you know, like you said, the faceless Viet Cong or whatever. I mean, that's kind of unavoidable because if you're making a film about this bunch of people, you don't really have the time to go over and see what those other people are up to, right? So that automatically yeah, unbalances. I, I, am, it. I am curious as to whether they, whether they could be, because there was, you know, there was more of that in that Chinese film. There wasn't very much of it, but there was more of that hmm. than you usually get as far as I'm, uh, of the war films I've seen. You know, you never see that, that like, how many war films about World War II where you've actually seen you know the Germans um, kind of spent some time with them and then gone back to the English or whatever. R right, right. Not very yes. often, or, or never, in fact, for me. But um, I'm sure there are. But uh, I, I, it did make me curious as to whether you. Could or if do they, one or if it is done, it's done like in that tokenish lip service way. So it it doesn't really. It, it just seems like. You're just doing that just to do it, and it's not really bringing anything to the story. It's sort of a waste yeah, of time. Yeah. But if you didn't do it, then people would complain that well, you didn't. Well, do in it. other words, you would if, if you were to do it properly, you'd have to have two narratives. You know, you'd have to, have, and you'd have to be equally invested in both, and then they clash. Right. Uh, right. And I, I don't think I've ever seen. I've, I've definitely never seen a war film like that. I would like to, if it worked. You know, that would be interesting. I think for me, the war film usually works bet better if it's my favorite war films in general tend to be very specific on like really specific missions or something like that. And when they kind of cross genres a little bit. So if it's if it's like a, a, a war film, but it's also like a heist film or, you know, you know, there's like a or it's a siege, you know, these very specific stories I think usually work best because then you, you don't necessarily need to bring in the great uh, story right but it doesn't seem as if you're whitewashing it either because well I'm I'm just telling this story here yeah. right um what's Herzog's war film isn't it um Rescue Dawn the the Vietnam one okay what's the one where they're getting the boat up the hill is that um Oh well, that's not a war film. That's is that uh, Fitzgerald. Not, is that, yeah, Fitzgerald. Is that not set in the war? No, no. Is it not? I can't no. remember it. I, yeah, I thought it was set during the war. Time. I mean, I, was just I think thinking making about... making that film seems like it would have been a war. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh... I was thinking like uh, it, whether it would uh, just some films where they where they have a narrow focus and the war is happening around, but it's not. You know, right, right. But um, that's obviously not. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, anyway, well, yeah. Enough of puffy talking. Let's get, get back. back to it. No, don't. Ah. Come on, that's.